clear about what Chicago is. It always will be a sanctuary city. To all those who are, after Tuesday's election, very nervous, there's filled with anxiety has been spoken to, you are safe in Chicago. You are secure in Chicago, and you are supported in Chicago. Uh, Chicago Mayor Rahm Emanuel apparently forget, uh, forgetting the uh, the number of gun related deaths in the city with broad shoulders. Uh, but now a Chicago mayor again, Rahm pointing out his preference for non citizens, reaffirming that Chicago will always remain a sanctuary city. Oh, really? Let's talk more about that. Uh, I'm uh, rejoined by the panel. Uh, on the far side of our desk uh, is Michael Solomon, former New York police investigator, noted author, and political pundit, and smack dab in the middle of this particular shot, though in no way is he a moderate. It's Glenn Downs, <laughs> former Capitol Hill chief of staff to Congressman Walter B. Jones of North Carolina. More on sanctuary cities, in fact. The phone has rung uh, a call from one of my former constituents Same. out in Chandler, Arizona. Kathy is on the phone. Kathy, welcome to America Talks Live. Hi, JD. I have come down. I remember the last time we talked, I was high on Trump winning the election. Well, you're, you're just you're walking on sunshine right now, uh, still, <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. We are so ecstatic here in Arizona, um, and I'm sure across the nation, but I had to speak on this topic because, you know, I, I would like to take Emmanuel and de Blasio back to the 50s and 60s when a constitutional right was given to the blacks to go to school. In, you know, in the, in, we had a bus children and people were against it. There was so much upheaval about it. The federal government had to go in. I hope it doesn't come to that with this. But where is it in our Constitution that Emmanuel has the right to do this? Why don't they go to Mexico and protest in the streets? Why aren't they burning? Get these people straight in their own country because their country is oppressive. Well, let's 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 go to the first topic there, which uh, Glenn is. Why does Rom think he can basically ignore the law? You know, we've heard from the left that conservatives are in favor of nullification of laws. What Rahm Emanuel, Bill de Blasio and the big city mayors and the L.A. police chief are arguing is nullification. Federal laws are on the books, but we are not going to enforce them. Well, Chicago's got a long history of ignoring laws with the people that run that city. So this would be fit, fit in, that, in that tradition. But, um, you, you know, it's, it, you're exactly right. As we discussed off camera, when Mr. Obama was making up laws, when he said, I have a pen, I have a telephone, and I, have, I waited long enough for Congress to do what I want them to do, so I'm going to just pretend laws that are on the books don't exist and laws that I wish were on the books I'm going to invent out of whole cloth. Uh, the day was going to come when the liberals would, would wish, uh, pray for the rule of law. And now, uh, now they've got Mr. Trump in who wants to, who's talking about just enforcing existing laws. Uh, but they're also where he might go beyond that. And, and, of course, the reason they don't have a moral authority to be, as, to, to be as concerned about that as they would otherwise is because they themselves back Mr. Obama just making up laws out of whole cloth. Yeah, it is a situation, and there have been pieces written today about the fear the left has that Donald Trump would emulate Barack Obama just as Glenn says he might. Do you think that's a temptation to which Donald Trump might succumb? I don't think he's going to succumb to that. I think he's going to have to look at what's already on the books. I mean, the Immigration Reform and Immigration Responsibility Act that Clinton signed in 1996 uh, 90, mandated that city municipal workers, police, fire, and so forth, report these illegal immigrants to the federal government for deportation. And for, the, for Rob Emanuel and, and, and L.A. And, and de Blasio in New York, to defy these laws is totally defying federal regulations. And my theory is very simple. You're looking for federal funding, you listen to what we have to say. You know, it's my kids, you want your allowance, you gotta clean up your room. Well, this is what we said you gotta do, and if you want your allowance, this is what you gotta do. And, and, and it's that simple. And you know what I wanna bring back immediately? I think one of the very first things that Congress should pass is Kate's Law. 
The Kate Steinle. Kate Steinle. Well, that that becomes the message because we know the wailing and gnashing of teeth will start if Congress actually pulls those purse strings in, saying it's real simple: you don't enforce federal law, you're not getting federal dollars. And uh, we can just imagine the the crocodile tears, the alphabet networks, and the big city newspapers are going to cry. So, Glenn, it yeah, is incumbent. I'm not, yeah. yeah, I'm not sure that that even legislation is necessary for that, as you have under under existing uh, right. the existing authority, the Department of Justice or Homeland Security or wherever the funding source is, can by executive fiat just withhold money. And and uh, you think Chicago's got crime problems now? My gosh, imagine what will happen with with uh, undeportable cr criminal aliens. And it's it, and no federal money to help uh, help help the. Uh, you know, and the other thing too. Emmanuel wants to get reelected. He's got an election coming up soon. He keeps talking like this. He's gone. He'll be deported out of Chicago. Well, it it would be interesting, but this almost comes down, and and so often politics comes down to this. Mm -hmm. It becomes a game of chicken. Who's going to fold first? And that's why it is important to have a to have a Steve Bannon and others in the White House to make this about. Kate Steinle to make it about the, the parents of American kids who were brutally murdered and attacked by illegals and to absolutely reinforce the message. You know, here's the irony, even for the quote, good illegals, the first act they commit is in violation of American law. And, and so you have that. And I guess the question becomes, you know where Ryan is on this thing. He, he's all, he wants to run for the hills. We heard him Sunday say, oh, no, no, there's not going to be a deportation force, conveniently ignoring the fact that we have a border patrol right now right. and we have immigration customs and enforcement. What is their job? Uh, under a law-abiding president, it would be to enforce, to be the deportation force. So some of these guys are going to get cold feet, and it's going to take a message saying, whoa, whoa, hang on a minute now. Here is the significant harm. Let's get back to uh, to common sense, and, and I guess that becomes a question, Michael. Does the Trump election signal a return to common sense after all these years of leftist fantasy embraced as de facto law? Trump ran as a law and order president, and the first thing you got to do is be the law enforcement president and protect this country with the laws that are on the books. As other laws are needed as you go along. You write them. You find a place to write them, and you write them, and you, and you act upon them. You can't ignore them. And the other thing was everybody screaming over the illegal immigrants. We need the vote. We need to forget the vote. But, know, the, but the left will never forget never That's forget part of their makeup. It. And in fact, today, and this is the other topic, Glenn, I want to get to, President Obama overseas. You know, he was on pretty good behavior during the initial transition meetings with Donald Trump. But... On this European tour in Greece today, President Obama spends his time talking about domestic American politics. Let's look and listen. A pretty healthy majority of the American people agree with my worldview on a whole bunch of things. And I know that that begs the question, well, how is it that somebody who appears to have a very different worldview just got elected? As I said, sometimes people just feel as if we want to try something to see if uh, we can shake things up. Uh, Glenn, has the current president taken a further detour into delusion right there? Well, it might be, but if it, it, what goes through my mind, frankly, is that he's thinking about what happens after January 20th to Barack Obama. Uh, you, know, he's, you know, there have been rumors that he's interested potentially in leading the United Nations. Uh, uh, if nothing else, you know, there's a lot of money to be made under the Bill Clinton model, and you're trying to play, he's trying to play to a different audience there than, than it would be to uh, a domestic audience back home. Well, of course, the U.N. would have to change its rulings about Secretary General because none of the permanent members of the Security Council can serve That's as Secretary it. General. So if, if uh, uh, Michael Solomon, if it is Mr. Obama following the Clinton grab-a-buck with speeches, uh, type of thing. As a guy who speaks, what advice would you have for him? About 45 seconds. What would you tell soon-to-be former President Obama? Don't set up a foundation, keep the server out of the basement, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I listened to him this morning. I'm saying, here he is blaming the American people for being angry. Why are they angry? They're not angry. They weren't angry at Trump. 
They were angry at him. He's the one who set up this whole mishmash that, we, that he's trying to say is, is not divided in America. And, and the other thing he did this morning was, if you listen carefully, he was blaming Bush without mentioning Bush about the worst recession, and he's finally got everything under control. He's got nothing under control. And he's using the same uh, techniques tabulating the economy that Cook County has done heretofore with election returns there in uh, his adopted hometown of Chicago. Glenn Downs, Michael Solomon, as always, we appreciate your insights and analysis. And when we return, uh, more of your calls. Plus, we will talk a bit more about President Obama's final trip abroad. And headlines and punchlines are ahead. A reminder, you can call us 1-877-NEWSMAX, 1-877-639-7629. We'll be right back.